Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Er zijn twee dingen die we allemaal hebben. Eén van hen is een van deze. We we wear that because we don't want to be bothered. You know, don't bother me. And then we all have an excuse bag. We've all got one of these. So if somebody gets past the don't bother me, we've got an excuse ready for the for God. Not everything that God asks us to do is convenient, but everything God asks us to do, He does give us the grace to do it. I always say that God gives you the grace for the place. Even like if you're raising a special needs child, I believe that God will give you the grace to do that. I know a young woman that has two special needs children, they're twins, and And then she has two other boys, and it's, it's amazing what it takes for her to take care of all these kids. And you, you just, you look at people and you think, I don't know how you do it. I just don't know how you do it. Well, people do whatever God wants them to do by the grace of God, which means He gives us the ability to do it. Maybe right now and you're, kind of, you're in kind of a difficult marriage. But you, you believe God wants you to stick it out. Well, you know what? You don't have to be miserable and unhappy the whole time you're in that situation. If you're in the place God wants you to be in, then He'll give you the grace to be in that place. And that means that you can be in an uncomfortable place and still have joy. Come on, there's somebody that I'm trying to talk to this morning. Can you not be comfortable and still be happy? I see not too many heads going this way. <laughs> You're kind of like, mm. yeah, well, I'm not perfect at it either. Remember, I got the revelation a few weeks ago that I don't like being uncomfortable. So <laughs> if you don't need this message, I'll preach to myself. So let's talk about Joseph for a minute because I find this to be very interesting. How many of you are someplace in life right now that just doesn't make any sense to you at all? <laughs> better than half of the people in here. Well, you know, you live life forward, but you understand it backwards. When you're going through stuff, you just don't get it. But later on, you can look back. So many of the things that were so hard for me. I look back now and I realize how God had to let that happen. You know, sometimes God will even use people's weaknesses to help us grow spiritually. How can we ever learn to love the unlovely if everybody we're around is nice to us? That's not unconditional love. Don't expect every day of your life to be perfect. Now, I'm not saying you got to go around and believe for trouble all the time, but don't, don't be shocked when things are inconvenient. So, Joseph went from living a nice little life. He was the youngest, daddy's favorite. You know, the babies are always the favorite. He went from that to slavery, to prison, to being put in a position to save a nation. You notice he had to leave comfort, go into misery, to be in a position where he could save a nation. Come on, let's do it again. He went from comfort <laughs> to unjust, unfair treatment, very uncomfortable. He had to go through that stage to grow him up enough to get him to the point where he could save a nation. When God called me into ministry, well, first of all, I was not doing anything special. I was making my bed. And I had three teenagers at the time and basically was just trying to survive life, you know. I loved God and we went to church every week and uh, 
But I, I didn't act like much of a Christian. I mean, I was very immature and always mad and upset about something. And I would have been your least likely candidate probably to be called to preach, but God knows things about us. He not only sees where we're at, but he sees where we will be. And you know, let me just throw in here that we, we need to be willing to look at more people that way. Not just look at where they're at right now, but what their potential is if somebody will love them unconditionally, pray for them, and stick with them through some stuff. Amen? You know, Dave was dating three girls when he met me and he was praying for a wife. I always say Dave definitely believed that faith without works is dead, so. <laughs> he was believing for a wife, but he was dating everything that moved, and so. When, when he met me, we had five dates and got married. I don't recommend it, but <laughs> I always say that he had to marry me before he found out what he was really getting or would have never worked. So, I mean, I, I, was, I was hard to deal with. I'd been abused and divorced and didn't trust anybody. And, I mean, I can actually tell you when I married Dave, I could never remember ever being really happy in my life or ever feeling safe. And so I just had a lot of wounds and a lot of hurts. And man, if he, if he would have done things like so many people do today, if you're uncomfortable, it's inconvenient, you're incompatible. I, who is compatible? <laughs> I mean, I mean, who marries somebody and says, oh, I, I just like everything you do? You know? I mean, that's just fantasy. And so, you know, you get along because you choose to get along. And you get along because you decide that you don't have to have your way all the time and that you're going to do what God wants you to do, not what you feel like doing. And so, if Dave would have been more concerned about his comfort than doing what he felt like God wanted him to do, I probably wouldn't be here today doing what I'm doing. Because somebody had to not just tell me about Jesus, somebody had to be Jesus in my life. And I'll tell you, I didn't change overnight. It took some time. And so many things, when God called me into ministry, there were so many hard things that I went through. I mean, we lost all of our friends. We got asked to leave our church. We had to find different schools for our kids because they went to, to school at church. And, and people that I loved and trusted turned against me and talked about me. And man, I didn't understand all that. I was just trying to be a good girl and do what I felt like God wanted me to do. You ever feel like that? Well, I'm just trying to do what I think is right. And I feel like all hell's broken loose on me. Come on, do you ever feel that way? It's like, well, see, we expect that if we do what's right, that we should get rewarded right away. <laughs> but that doesn't always happen that way. Those who diligently seek God <laughs> will receive a reward in due time, in due time. Well, now I look back, I didn't understand. Oh, man, I did not understand. I mean, family members turned against us. It, it was a tough time. I tell Dave sometimes, I don't really even, other than the grace of God, I don't know how I even had the ability to keep saying yes to God with everything that I was losing. You have to understand, back when I started doing this, I mean, women in ministry were just like very unpopular. There just wasn't that many people. But I look back now, and I was so dependent on people and what they thought of me, and I got my worth and my significance from people. And I'm telling you what, God had to kick every prop out from under me and teach me how to get rooted and grounded in Him. So maybe you're someplace right now where you don't, it's not convenient, it's not comfortable, you don't want to be there. Well, let me make a new suggestion to you. Instead of begging God to get you out of there, why don't you just say, God, when you're ready to move me to another place, 
I trust that you will. But in the meantime, teach me whatever it is I need to learn while I'm here and use me for your glory while I'm in this place. You know how much more you would enjoy? You can enjoy being in hard places if you have the right attitude. How many of you need to hear what I'm saying this morning? All right. Because I'll quit if you don't want to hear it. Well, probably I won't, but. Okay, so now Joseph has gone through all this stuff and it's been really hard. He's in prison for 13 years for something that he did not do. He helped the baker and the butler get out of prison. I asked them to remember him. They, of course, they forgot all about him. He stayed in prison. But you know, when God has a plan for your life, no matter what people don't do for you, come on now, when God is ready to make a move, nobody will stop him. And listen, part of Satan's plan is to get us all messed up with bitterness and unforgiveness. So he arranges for people to hurt us, hoping we'll get all messed up inside. So then we never end up getting what God wants us to have because now we're out of sorts with God. But if you can just continue doing what God tells you today to do, when your time, listen to me, when your time for promotion comes, no man on earth and no devil in hell can keep you from what God has for you. So we just need to stop blaming people and just secretly look at them and say, Behind, under your breath, no matter what you do to me, you cannot keep God from blessing me. <laughs> God's got a plan for you. So. It's the end of the whole thing now. Joseph has gotten out of prison. He's gotten favor with Pharaoh because he interpreted a dream for him. And Pharaoh trusts him so much that he's put him in charge of all the food. And they were facing, they'd already had two years of famine and were facing five more. And so if anybody wanted anything to eat, they had to get it from Joseph. So his father and his brothers, the brothers who sold him into slavery, they're living somewhere else now, not in Egypt, and they're hungry, and they hear that there's food there. So they went, got an appointment with Joseph, not knowing that he was the brother whom they had mistreated. So starting in Genesis 45, verse 1, it says, Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried, Make everyone go out from me, so no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud so that the Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh heard it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph, is my father still alive? And his brothers could not even answer him for they were dismayed, or you might say afraid at his presence. They thought, well, now we're gonna get what's coming to us. So Joseph said to his brothers, come near to me, please. And they came near and he said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. But now watch this. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourself because you sold me here. For God sent me here before you to preserve life. So he's basically saying, you thought you were sending me here but the only reason you sent me here was because God wanted me here and he had a purpose. So let me tell you something, even in some of the things that happen that seem so unbelievably unfair and unjust, God can still have a purpose and we need to remember God is in control of my life, not you. Verse six, for the famine has been in the land these two years and there are five years yet to go where we will neither plow nor harvest. And God sent me, somebody say, God sent me. God sent me. 
Maybe you're at a job right now where you're the only believer and people don't treat you right and you know they're making fun of you and judging you and you absolutely hate the place and can't wait to get out of there. Maybe what God's trying to say to you today is, stop it, I sent you there. <laughs> Come on, I hear somebody that's semi-happy. What makes us think that God couldn't possibly have sent me there if I'm not comfortable? Yes, God wants to bless us, but there's other things He wants to do besides that. He wants to use us, and I, I just might as well tell you, if you are going to be used by God, you are going to be persecuted. I said, if you're going to be used by God, you are going to be persecuted. Not everybody's going to clap and cheer because you want to do some great thing for God. <laughs> well, I still got a few people smiling. That's good. <laughs> and God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on the earth and to keep alive many survivors so that it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he made me a father to Pharaoh and a lord of all of his house and a ruler over all the land of Egypt. You know, I don't have time to do this, so I won't get into it, but I could go back to my own story. I mean, I prayed for God to get me out of that situation, and he didn't. Now, I don't think God's an abuser, and I don't think he arranged for my father to abuse me, but he could have gotten me out of the situation much sooner than what he did. And God had a plan all along. He wanted to use me to expose what was going on behind closed doors in so many places. As far as I know, I was one of the first people to start really talking about incest and sexual abuse. And you know, I've got this, and I believe it is a gift from God. I mean, I am extremely open about my life and usually anybody else's life that has anything to do with me. And uh, so people always say, you just need to know if you're gonna hang out with Joyce, you're probably gonna get talked about in the pulpit. And so because I have this gift of being so honest, I was able to tell that story and tell it in a way that set so many people free. So the devil thought, come on, the devil may think that he's got you somewhere where he's ruining you and destroying you, but little does he know it's the springboard for your promotion in life. Amen? Now, there's so many, many, many examples. There's two things that we all have. One of them is one of these. We, we wear that because we don't want to be bothered, you know, don't bother me. And then we all have an excuse bag. We've all got one of these. So if somebody gets past the don't bother me, we've got an excuse ready for, the, for God. Let's see, I mean, we have just got so many. I, I've got a bunch. Well, God, I don't know how to do that. That's the first thing I said when he called me to teach. I don't know how to teach. He said, I know, but I do. If you just had any idea how dumb I was when I started this, you would spend the rest of the day rolling around the floor laughing. I mean, I have no idea how I got from where I was to where I am, but here we are. Well, God, this is not, that's not what I had planned. I can't do that. I'm not ready for this yet. <laughs> Maybe another time. I have too many personal problems of my own. Boy, that is a big one. I, you know, well, God, I, I'll increase my giving next time I get a raise. No, God doesn't want you to wait for a time where you can give it and not miss it. Maybe he wants your vacation money. Well, I've been saving that for three years. I, I've got a plan. Why? God's not mean. Why would he take my vacation money?
Come on, if you're believing for something big, you might as well get ready to sow big, and you might as well get ready to sow sacrificially. My gosh, do I admire people who will do what God tells them to do, even when it makes no sense at all to them. And what if you never ever, while you're breathing, make any sense out of it? It still is just good to obey God. I don't know anybody who's ever done this before. This is the favorite. Boy, it's just too hard. I have no experience. I have nobody to help me. I don't have any money. I'm afraid. I don't feel like it. Come on, you got one of these. Maybe it's not like mine. I mean, you may not see it like you see mine, but how many of you know we've got excuses? You know, is anybody getting this? Because I'm about out of time. God uses your journey to prepare you for the assignment that he's given you. You know, God called Abraham. I just happened to notice this when he was 75. Well, I just had my 75th birthday, so I thought, well, Lord, is that your sneaky way of telling me I'm just beginning? <laughs> Come on, when I started this ministry, first of all, I didn't start teaching until I was 33. I taught a home Bible study for five years. Then I worked for somebody else for five years that was not always easy to work for. I started Joyce Meyer Ministries, Dave and I did, when I was 42. Had three teenagers and a baby. I didn't go on television until I was 50. And now I've been on TV for 25 years. Come on. So let me end with this, and then I will have been a good girl and stayed right on the clock. <laughs> Stop making excuses. That's the message today. Stop making excuses and just do what God tells you to do. Can anybody say amen? amen. Uh, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you deal with all of us. We can all come up higher. I have so far to go. And I want you to deal with me. I want you to show me areas where I'm deceived or where I'm weak or where I'm being disobedient. And I pray that for everyone else here. And we know, Lord, that you never give us more than what we can bear, but with every temptation, you provide the way out. So for those today that feel like they're kind of at the end of their rope and they're weary and tired of standing, I pray that you would revive them and re-strengthen them and, and just refuel them for them to know that however long it takes, they can do what they need to do. And I pray blessing over every one of them that they'll be blessed when they go in and blessed when they go out. And no matter how long they have to wait on their breakthrough, that they can stay happy all the way through. In Jesus' name, amen. We need to take our do not disturb signs down, get rid of all of our excuses, and make ourselves available for whatever God would like to do in our lives. I'm always amazed when we come to a medical clinic that we can come out to a, a field or something that there's absolutely nothing and it becomes a well-oiled machine of, of medical care. How long have we been doing this? Uh, this is our 100th outreach. 
That's and, awesome. And uh, I want to see it's close to 10 or 11 years. Walk us through how this process works for your team. Patients, they come in and uh, they, they're waiting in line. Um, from there, they'll go in at Weights and Thames and see a, see a nurse for, for triage where they'll ask their primary chief complaint. Um, what's the one main reason that you're here? How, how can we help you? From there, they're afforded the opportunity to either see a doctor or a dentist completely free of charge. Um, from a doctor, we ask every single patient that comes in, uh, can we pray for you? And then from there, once they exit, they come here and they receive uh, free medicine. Describe for someone watching at home what you see out here on a regular basis. What is it like? Some have the same our patients at home have, but we also have rare diseases we don't see in, uh, in Europe. And uh, I also have the experience that the patients here are very um, humble, they are very thankful, and um, they, they have the hope that you bring them some help. Uh, there was a man who was coming because he said he cannot see properly. So um, we tried glasses, and I really uh, loved this moment when he put on the glasses, and I could see that he gets really happy, and then he just said, I can read. And I was like, just didn't want to freak out totally, but yeah. <laughs> have to stay professional, yes, and yet you're yes. so excited for yes. what's happening. That's awesome. Yeah. Are people impacted for Christ through what you're doing here? Yes, I think so, because um, I do that because I love Jesus. I think they feel it, and yeah, sometimes we just pray right at the investigation table mm -hmm. <laughs> just to make them know that Jesus is the doctor all above us. Yeah. Here at the medical clinic, we are seeing many people getting help that they've needed for a long time, and our wonderful volunteers here, they work so hard, and we're just so grateful for all of you that make this possible. So right now, let me just ask you to be a part of everything that we're doing. Your special gift today can help lives in ways that you can never imagine. But together, we can make a big, big difference. So call us right now, go to the website, joycemeyer.org, and give a special gift today that will help people, not only here in Africa, but all over the world. Wilt u meehelpen de wereld te veranderen? Word dan onze partner en doneer regelmatig. Wij sturen u graag kostenloos onze brochure toe. Vraag deze aan door te bellen naar 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl partner.